tell us a bit about your background with the Radiophonic Workshop? Um, well, I feel very old. Um, <laughs> but I am. Um, I, being a child of the 90s. I was a child of the 60s. And if you were a child of the 60s in the UK, you couldn't but hear Delia's work. We were surrounded by it, but it, it wasn't often credited. Um, I mean, I remember hearing things like the dreams on the radio in the background and not knowing what it was. But on a Saturday night you got Doctor Who, which was weird music. Um, if you watched Blue Peter during the week, you got Bleat and Booster, if you remember Bleat and Booster, which was little uh, uh, cartoon, sort of Jack and Ori type stories um, with sound by Brian Hodgson. And then if you went to school in the 60s, which those of us who were alive then did, um, we had a programme called Music and Movement. And I have many happy memories, or maybe not so happy memories, of standing in a drafty playground pretending to be a tree um, <laughs> to the sound of Delia Derbyshire. Um, so you couldn't but hear this stuff. You really couldn't. It was, it was the soundtrack of our lives in, 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 to, to a very large extent. And for me, I, I grew up being interested in that stuff, but on a very passive, in a very passive way, until 1972. And in 1972, um, I was 11 years old, and I suddenly got absolutely hooked on Doctor Who. And the reason for it was that although I enjoyed watching it for what it was, you know, a guy in a police box and a pretty girl, um, <laughs> that I loved the way it sounded. It sounded like nothing else. Um, or rather, it sounded like all this stuff I'd been growing up with for 11 years, and I suddenly realised why and how. And we had uh, Dudley Simpson, who was working with the Radiophonic Workshop on, on electronic music with, with a couple of live players. And then we had um, Tristan Carey, who wrote uh, music for uh, Story Called Mutants. We had Malcolm Clark, who was one of the um, total anarchists at the workshop, who did a story called The Sea Devils. And all of these in one season of Doctor Who, and I thought, I want to do that. that, that I want to make those sounds. And I did. Um, or rather, I'd like to think I got tiny way close to what they were doing. Because it was just so exciting. And, and that's what happened. I, got, I, I met Dick Mills, who you saw in the film at a Doctor Who convention. So that's the kind of guy I was. I went to Doctor Who conventions. And um, he obviously realised I was very enthusiastic, probably because I wouldn't leave him alone, and in, invited me to the workshop to have a look around when I was about 16. And they couldn't get rid of me. You know, every holiday from university, I was down there, so I can't hold them around. Um, and eventually, I got to work on. Doc I sort of became a freelance composer. Um, although I do a lot of electronic music, I also do a lot of orchestral music and whatever as well. Um, but electronic music has always been a love of mine. And um, I was eventually commissioned to do Doctor Who, which was sort of semi coincidental. But that was that was amazing. I walked into the radiophonic workshop for the music spotting session because Dick Mills did all the sound effects on Doctor Who. And he, we used to have the music spotting session, the sound spotting session at the radiophonic workshop. So I walked in the radiophonic workshop, age twenty seven, with my first sort of commission on the programme. And <laughs> Dick looked at me and said, Yeah, out of frying pan into the shit. Calling <laughs> <laughs> uh, members out of fandom in to try to actually make this show work on no money. So that's what they always did. But that's, that's, that's where I started. Have I walked on too long? Talk to me. No, no, no that, that's fine. I mean, um, but um, I think we need to ask David, certainly. 